Welcome. I'm your host, Dustin. And today we have a sitting co host, Jeff <laughs> Whitmire. You know, we had Jeff on um, about, what, a couple weeks ago? To, yeah, you know, couple, yeah, two, three weeks, yeah. Talk about, um, you know, your music and everything. So we did a, a full deep dive on everything that you have been doing and um, you're constantly creating, which is absolutely awesome. And you wanted to come on and talk about the movie that um, was released on Screenbox last month, um, which is Holy Shit. And mm-hmm. this is actually a review that I meant to do when we got the screener link for it, but... Um, it was during the time where Dean um, was getting ready for all of his conventions, which he's still doing right now. So it's going to be a little bit before you see him on here. So it's mainly going to be me with a guest or just me by myself. And I also want to point out today I have a different camera on because my last one just completely killed itself. And so don't mind my little off-centered camera. Just, uh, you know, tilt your head a little bit. It'll it'll mm-hmm. be fixed next time. But... um. Jeff, uh, how are you doing, man? It's like it's like you're sideways in a porta potty. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. For, it's perfect for this <laughs> perfect. film. Yes, I'm I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. You know, I got my wisdom teeth taken out this week, um, but I'm healing well. As you can see, I sound pretty good. I don't sound so muffled or you know like mm-hmm. chip monkey or anything like that. So I'm really yeah. happy. I got a bunch of drinks over here. I just took a bunch of pills. No pain, and I'm really happy. That's good. No pain at all, man. Um, It's really funny, um, brief story. When I got my wisdom teeth pulled, um, they told me that I was going to be awake, but I was going to be sedated, you know, awake and, you know, conscious sedation. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember anything. (laughs) No, that's, that's, that's cool. So I mean, um, I guess that's a good thing, right? Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, my, my partner was there and she remembers everything that was happening. I don't remember anything. Apparently I tried running downstairs and I was told not to, or, I was like mm. completely high, and it's really funny because I, apparently I left a message to Dean, like a voice message to him, and I I listened to it back. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm um I'm definitely high as a kite. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> don't remember anything, and I'm I'm really thankful for that. So we're gonna make I it actually, through this one. I actually had to call my periodontist today because I had ten days ago, eleven days ago, I had a sort of oral surgery too. Oh really? Um, I had I had a gum graft done. They had to take the gum from the roof and. Oh, yeah, in. yeah. I heard those are pretty painful. Oh. And, then, and it was for a few days, and I was trying to do everything right, the soft foods and everything. And I was like, cause I'm, I'm paranoid because you spend all this money, and, and this is something I've wanted done for a while. And uh, I was like, I don't want it to fail. I don't, you know, you hear all these scary stories if yeah. you do this wrong. And, um, but yeah, it was going well. It was looking good. And then I woke up today, and uh, one of the sutures, because I don't have an appointment until next week, one of the sutures is like flopping around in front of my tooth, behind my tooth. Oh, no. My wife, my wife saw it. She's like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. And I'm like, hey, I'm freaking out. I'm like, I'm like, I got to call. I actually got to call and cancel you like this today. And I got to find out what's going on. And I, I called the uh, periodontist at home on the emergency line. He came back and said, He's like, I could see you today, but he's like, it's it's fine. He's like, that means it did its, it did its job and, and you're good. And, and just come in Monday morning and we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. So I'm like, all right, cool. Right, awesome. We're good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, I got a bunch of stitches and stuff in here, but they they feel like they're holding. It's mainly mm-hmm. um, they took out they left one actually they left one wisdom tooth thing because they said it was fine. So I got one out here and then two over here, and the left side of my mouth is where I feel it the most. But yeah, everything is fine. Everything's holding up. They keep nice. calling yeah. me. So yeah. soft foods. I've been eating mashed potatoes. Like that's what I was doing. The, yeah, <laughs> soup, soups, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, instant <laughs> mashed potatoes and soups. That's mm-hmm. I can honestly yeah. live off that stuff, even if I wasn't, you know, yeah, right. um, in the position I was in. But um, today we're here to talk about a Screenbox original, which is mm-hmm. holy shit! It is a German film. And um, before we go into that, I want to um, let all of our listeners know um, another way for you guys to support the show. Um, I'm still going to be on Patreon, but I'm not going to be pushing it as much, just because it's, it's a lot of work having to balance all the shows out and then make sure you're getting things out on time like i try to do like one to two days early on there but sometimes it's not gonna happen so through our um podcast podcast distributor which is um anchor you guys can go on there and you can subscribe or you can do a listener support um monthly which is a donation monthly and i have it the lowest possible it's at 99 cents so if anybody wants to go and support the show you know help us get better cameras like the one that just failed on me or anything like that or support the show show you love even more that's the best way to go and do that and they will be in the descriptions going forward um for all the shows and um jeff you also have youtube so i'll let you go ahead and you know kind of talk about where people can go and support you 
Uh, yeah, um, most of my new stuff that I put out, I just put out a new song uh, for the VHS franchise to UHF by Weird Al. So good. Um, <laughs> thank you. That <laughs> was so much fun doing that one. And uh, that that's on my uh, YouTube channel, Jeff Whitmire 47. Um, I have been ever since that song came out, people have been like, you got to get back on Bandcamp. So I'm going to fire that up. Jeff Whitmire is my Bandcamp page. And that's where you can, um, you know, pay a buck and download a song and uh, just help help you know fund the cost of it because it, it, i do spend money on the songs and everything trying to make them sound as good as i can so i'm gonna post that there and that's where my album's gonna be here uh hopefully very soon in the next i'm hoping within the next like two months it, it's so close right now fingers but, crossed. Uh, so yeah just keep yeah fingers crossed uh, i'm working on one song this weekend i have one more i really wanted to do uh for the, the album uh, so um people are joking though know, because a lot of the stuff the last year and, and now this year we're never meant to be on the album. So they're like, <laughs> just make it a double album at this point. I'm like, yeah. all right, we'll do that. Yep. Stabby Road and Let It Bleed or something. And uh, I think I had, um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's uh, Jeff Whitmire 47 and Bandcamp uh, is Jeff Whitmire. That's where you can find my stuff. Awesome. And I'll link everything down below too. So it's easy for everybody yep. to go and um, support you and listen to your music because you are so funny and so talented and you need thank you i appreciate it all eyes on you <laughs> eyes and ears on you <laughs> um and i know that we also have something very in common too is um screenbox has been you know giving us some you know mm -hmm. some freebies here and there to go and watch some yep. films early and um we are totally obsessed with this streaming yes. service i am it is put out there april um list of movies and once yes. again, it's Birdemic, like all three Birdemics. Yeah, it's another like 30 <laughs> titled like month drop. Like, and they just dropped like 20 in the last two days. Yeah, like, it's <laughs> ridiculous. They have yeah, been they're... really pushing it. And um, I'm so happy for them. It just means that, you know, more people are going to the service. Mm -hmm. There's more people supporting it. And um, that's what I like to do on this show is to show as much support as I possibly can for something that I love. And um. Or, you know, a service that also gives us a lot of things. So I want to give a little bit of, in return. As everybody knows, I've been doing the um, Screenbox Essential Picks, which is, um, you know, me just going over some films on the service for people who are, you know, new there or who have been there for a while and still kind of stumped as to what they should be watching. So this month is going to be going to be jam-packed with a lot of Essential Picks, and I'm excited um, but here we're going to be talking about Holy Shit, which I said is a um, Screenbox original. And um, Jeff, you wanted to come on and talk about this, and I'm so happy that you did because <laughs> I felt so bad that I didn't get to this one. Um, I put out the um, Family Dinner um, review, uh, I think, last week, which that drops this week um, this coming week, out, yeah. which is uh, a really, really good film as well. Um, but I figured what we can do is um, we can go through IMDb real quick and then we can go on Rotten Tomatoes if there's mm -hmm. any scores or anything like that. Um, so I'll read everybody the plot because um, this movie is pretty bonkers for being in uh, one location. <laughs> one and one location, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the plot to this is architect Frank wakes up from unconsciousness squashed in a porta potty, but it gets worse. In order not to be blown up during the imminent demolition, Frank must make his way out of his blue grave in one hour, a race against time. Um, very, very good. I like that description. IMDb has been really, really good with the descriptions lately. They're not like two words and that's it. Like most of the time it is. Mm, right. Um, and also with only 184 reviews, this has a 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb. Nice. That's pretty good for a nice. German film. Yeah. Um, Rotten Tomatoes, I would have you guess, but there's no ranks. <laughs> there's no, no. There's one. No, that's what's crazy about some of these movies that they get and the, and the movies that we find is that they're not widely publicized. And this is one that I would like shout from the rooftops. Like you have to see this movie. Yes, yes. Especially for like foreign films and you, and mm -hmm. you want to yes. get away yeah. from like, um, you know, the Korean and Japanese um, foreign films and you mm -hmm. want to go somewhere else. This is perfect. Um, there's only one critic review on the on Rotten Tomatoes, but it has no score. Um, I wonder if it has a budget or anything on here, because sometimes we're lucky with that. Yeah. Um, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but the runtime is an hour 30, hour 31, if you want to round up. It's a really, really good film. And um, Jeff, since you are our guest, I'll let you kind of, you know, steer the way. Where would you like to start with this film? Because there's a lot that happens. We can start from the beginning and go all the way through, or we can sure. yeah. go through um, and pick our... Uh, favorite moments so i'll let you have the floor for a little bit man 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, definitely what drew my attention to it is I caught wind that it was a single location film. And and to me, those are, uh, you know, really unique and they're hard to pull off. I think they're hard to, they're hard oh, yeah. to nail because you have to, you have to keep it engaging in this film. Um, except for uh, a few moments of kind of surrealism with flashbacks and, and things like that. I mean, it, the entire movie takes place in the porta potty. Mm -hmm. Uh, Frank, Frank, the architect wakes up, um, and this porta potty it's, it's flipped over and, uh, He's actually uh, he's actually pinned down, and there's there's some there's some really good gore in this too. I mean, it doesn't oh, go, yeah. it doesn't go, it doesn't lean you know crazy into it, but it's definitely there. And I mean, he wakes up basically pinned to a piece of rebar, and so not only is it a single location film, he's pretty much trapped in one spot for the first chunk of the movie. I don't want to spoil. I don't know how, how spoilery we're getting, but um, um, yeah, I mean, we can go as much as you want. Um, it's okay. This movie but, is is out now, so that's completely yeah, fine. We but, can um, go right but yeah, into I mean. He, yeah, he pretty much he wakes up uh, um, pinned down, and and the the mystery. I mean, there's definitely a, a story that unravels. It's not uh, uh, you pretty you pretty quickly into it. You 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 know what's going on. You know oh, what yeah. happened. He he wasn't there by chance. He wasn't there by accident. Um, and there's a uh, um, that going on. Then there, there's a subplot that I I think one of those things that really sold it to me involving his family issues and his wife and and that and uh, and that really gives the film its heart. And they wrap that storyline up so perfectly. Um so good. Not that like oh, go way into the plot. Yeah, but um uh it they make Frank such a likable character. And oh, I yeah. think a good movie is one where you root for the character. And by halfway into this movie, you are rooting for Frank to succeed and and also to get revenge on the character that that put him there. So yeah. And like that's another thing too. This is essentially a solo location, um, solo location film, yeah. and a solo performance for most of it. So there's a lot, you know, being taxed on with with Frank, with him, you know, having to be there, with all the things he goes through. Um, I know a couple of movies that I can kind of you know say this would remind me of is um, I think it's Buried with um, Ryan Reynolds when he was in mm -hmm. the uh, in the coffin, and what and that other one um, with the hiker that got dropped was it like. 100 hours or something like that when he had to right. cut off his his hand when he was um trapped um when he was hiking in the in the desert or whatever so there's a couple of films out there that that you'd be like oh this reminds me of that so that's another reason why it, i like in this. a weird sort of way you could draw a parallel to glorious too being yeah trapped yeah. in the uh they're being trapped in the uh rest stop but yeah. they're a single location film now in glorious there's a little more character interactivity than you get in uh holy shit but um, you know, kind of the kind of the same premise there, just not the as cosmic as Glorious Yeah, Gears, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh my holy god. Holy shit has a straight up plot. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> like would be crazy up. if this was like a cosmic horror film too. Like he's just floating <laughs> in space in a porta potty. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Now they do get some surreal things going because he does imagine a lot. Yeah. And uh which I think is at about halfway point, um, things really kind of uh, the shit really hits the fan, and he starts imagining some really crazy things involving his wife and uh, the villain. Yeah, and uh, um, there's some some just I should say this: the film is over the top in all the right ways. Like there's a like when you least expect that there's an operatic music cue as he's trying to uh, get himself out. Yeah, and, yeah. And, um, it definitely has its leaps and bounds. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and uh, and they give him his own kind of Wilson too uh, to to talk to. There's a uh, toilet seat. Yeah, the face that's so it, funny. Who, oh my who God. likes to ridicule him, and and uh, and to a certain extent, I think is is a little bit helpful at times too. But they, it's so such a funny little plotline where he's actually interacting with the toilet seat. Yeah, and also this uh, movie has a really really good soundtrack as well. I love yes. all the tunes that are in here. Um, Jeff, if you want to um, name the band, because I totally forget who who it I was. did. Yeah, so the the the, the movie opens. Um, with this song, this German song that sounds very 80s popish, and it got stuck in my head, and it kind of opens into a clever scene where you see a, a girl come out, and um, she's basically a stripper, and then you find out that that's the poster that he's, <laughs> Frank is staring at, at. Well, yeah, in the porta potty, which is really cool. <laughs> and that song does creep in a few times too, and then it comes in the closing credits. And by the, I was so jazzed by the end of this movie and the way it ends. When that song came in again, I was like, yes, and I, I just kept playing the end credits trying to find out who this is and kept playing the song over and over and i posted it on twitter and it was a german band um and i'm i i apologize i'm not going to get this right but <laughs> munchener frau heist and the song is onadish onadish uh and uh i looked it up and someone said yeah you should, should uh, check out their other stuff and i went and i 
and I was went down a wormhole listening to this band. I'm definitely so gonna be good. doing that after yeah. this. I, I love yeah. me some German music. I, I've played it like this the the closing credit song to this. I've I've blasted it in my car while driving. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, we need to have you do a parody of it. <laughs> yeah, in English. Yeah, we should have <laughs> in English. Right. That'd be awesome doing a parody of Holy Shit. I I could see you pulling yeah, that off yeah. for sure. I could. I yeah. Um, another thing that really, uh, you know, drew me to this is not only the poster, but how colorful this movie is for being in mm-hmm. a porta potty. Yes, the art design is ridiculous in this film. The uh, cinematography and everything it makes this one little teeny tiny space feel huge and full of color. And when yeah. you think of porta potty, you think dirty. It is very dirty. All right, where he is is super mm-hmm. dirty. The things that he does is is gross. You know, he's definitely yep. infected. He's he's yep. dying yes. regardless if he gets out or not. Um, but it it has a, its own life, and it feels mm-hmm. uh, it feels really and fresh they, to see a they, movie like this. They find a way to add variety too, because about the halfway point, um, the first major plot point that you hope doesn't happen does happen. Yeah, and it shifts the whole dynamic. He's still in the porta potty. But it's like a different space all of a sudden. It's flipped over. It's flipped. The uh, the the, the porta potty is in a different uh, orientation, and it's dark, and it's yeah. um, changes the whole dynamic of the film without leaving that location, which I thought was really clever. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of twists that happen in this, and um, mm-hmm. I enjoy all of them. Um, even because there's actually a lot of voice acting in here, which is yeah. cool, and the way that they do it, it made where he is feels so huge. Um, we get introduced to um, his partner, um, Horst. I think that's how you would say it or right. Yeah. Yeah. Horst, Horst, Horst Wolf. Yeah, Horst, yep. yeah. And then, um, you know, we get introduced also to his, his um, girlfriend, um, Murray or Mary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the, um, envir- Bob. The, the environment. Yeah. The environmentalist. Yeah. Um, the environmentalist. And then um, Bob who Bob is so funny. Bob is so good. <laughs> I <laughs> love that guy. Explosive expert Bob. Yeah. Yeah. He's so funny. Um, and Bob is a good guy. Bob does. Bob does try to help, but then Bob, Bob meets a, a tragic end. Yeah. Which um, <laughs> a lot of people do. Um, we get introduced to some cops at the end of here. Um, so I think at this point, the um, most bumbling cops ever. Yeah. At this point <laughs> we can kind of, you know, start going into plot a little bit more. Um, Cause this is a movie that everybody needs to see. If you have screen box, Go watch this right now. If you don't have screen box, get it to watch this. Because I promise this yeah. movie alone this adds so would much. Would be a selling point. Yeah. I mean, I could name a lot, obviously, of screen box selling points, but this is this is one. If you get screen box, make this one of your first ones. Yeah, exactly. You won't be disappointed, yeah. Um, so it it's it's such a crazy film with the things that he goes through. You know, he's got his arm stuck, he's got to find ways mm-hmm. to um get help. He has his phone that's stuck in the toilet, which is absolutely gross. Um, he he, <laughs> which he manages to use in really clever ways, and then yeah, just he, he like he sticks gum on like a um uh, a measuring stick. Yeah, he's, measuring an, he's an architect, stick. so yeah. <laughs> and, and he, he starts like the... poking at it and everything. Yeah. Which uh, there's a lot of things in this film that make me go like, why'd you do that? But he's yeah, in a, right. like a life or death situation, so he's chewing gum, and then you know his hands been in shit and everything. He's taking mm-hmm. out the gum and he's putting it on on the yeah. Stick. It's definitely it's definitely a gross movie, which you which you would probably expect being in a porta potty the whole time. So yeah, it, it, you do get you do get the potty humor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, and so he like manages to lock his phone um, once, and he you know starts hearing over like. The, the loudspeakers, because where he is, there's like a big festival going on about um, this house being torn down. He hears from his partner <clears> talking <throat> about that. We start to um, discover that he was the architect that was going to help you know, build everything once it got um, demolitioned. And then we mm-hmm. get introduced to all these other characters. Um, and then while things go on, um, he starts looking at things and he starts getting his memory back, but it's a little, you know, rigged. He's not 100% in, sure. In pieces, right, yeah. Yeah, he's like, is this what happened? I don't know if that's what happened. Um, but there's like um, a briefcase that he sees and he finally realizes like, oh, he was hitting the head with that, but he doesn't know how he was hitting the head with it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he starts opening it and then the, the toilet seat's uh, talking to him. And there's a lot <laughs> that's going on in this film. For, you know, this one location for this one guy. And you feel so bad for him. You want him to get out. You're rooting for him, like you were saying. You root for him right. so, so hard. And also, like, he has... The actor they have, he has such a great look. He's so animated. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. I, he's so good at what he does. 
Um, There's some dramatic points where he's realizing he might not ever see his fiance again, and he flips out and he starts to imagine her in these um, positions with with horse and everything. And he flips out, or he'll he'll see something or say something and he'll joke about it. Like his range in this is so good through it, and I think that's a like um, one thing. I, one thing I thought about this movie the whole time I watched it, both times because I've seen it twice now, is just how it flows. It oh, never yeah. feels stagnant. And um, they could easily just tell the story in flashbacks because like, you know, like you were saying, um, you know, we find out as it goes on, he's an architect. There's this big project being built by this horse guy who's we come to find out is this whacked out billionaire who's <laughs> losing his mind. And and he's basically going to kill anyone who stands in his way. And that's why Frank is down there as well as uh, someone else. And um, because of um, something that would have hindered the yeah. building of this project. Yeah. And uh but the, the flashbacks aren't just told in flashbacks. Sometimes they are, but you get a video of the environmentalist um, talking about the owl that's on the property. So you get that piece of it there. You get a piece of what's going on with his wife and the concerns there through um, hearing her on the speaker. Yeah. So it's never just done one way. It, it feels very uh, um, fluid the way they, they, they give you this backstory. Oh, yeah. I agree on that 100%. Um... I don't know. I think I was a little skeptical at first because, you know, there's a lot of movies that you hear, like you were saying before, it's kind of hard for people to like pull off like a single location mm -hmm. film. Um, but I, I have a lot of faith in, in screen boxes movies that they pick, but I still was like a little hesitant because um, this was my second or third time watching it. My first time going in, I'm like, oh my God, am I going to like this? And I love it. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> it, it It's a weirdly another comfort film that i could throw yeah. on in the background and be yes. like this is this is nuts um and whatever if you happens, speak german it works better but <laughs> yeah 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 um so we you find out that the environmentalist you know was kind of going after um uh horst who wants to um blow up this certain area but there's um a group of endangered owls that are here and he's like i don't give a shit and now, um, Frank, he starts to um, understand, and he, he doesn't want to go along with it when we find out more with the flashbacks, mm -hmm. but he's kind of put in this position that if he doesn't, he knows that he's going to be out right. of a job, um, and he already took all this time away from his, his girlfriend, his, fi his fiance, who, you know, he was bickering with a lot, and, you know, you can tell that there was some tension because he was putting his job you know, ahead of everything else, mm -hmm. which I think... Yeah, and they make him a flawed character, but a likable one. Like, he's not, yeah. like, Frank's a good guy. He was just he was in the zone um, as far as his girlfriend or fiance goes. Yeah. Um, and then, and of course that starts to resolve itself as it goes on. And he realizes where he is and what he could lose. And yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's something I think we can all can relate on is that we kind of get buried in our work sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I'm guilty of doing that a lot with my job um, yeah. or even with the show. Sometimes I get really buried in it and I'm like, Oh crap, I didn't really do anything else today. Um, so we can relate to Frank in a lot of different ways. You don't have to be an architect to be like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm like Frank. <laughs> no, he really is just like, you know, a normal guy who's just trying to make it by and to provide for his family. And then when you start to, you know, see all of the bad things that are happening to him with, you know, doing this job, like we find out that um, Horst is the one that, you know, essentially put him there. And he like, we hear um, once he gets into the porta potty that he, on the car and he obviously runs over to porta potty and then we see um the wire go through his uh frank's arm which is so grotesque but mm -hmm. so so yeah. awesome to look at <laughs> um so we see that and then we find out that um he also put He's down the environmentalist. Yeah, yeah he padlocked he pad it. he padlocked the porta potty and yeah the environmentalist is down there too uh yep. um tied up and everything gagged yeah, and but basically, um, basically, he's going to hide the evidence. He's going to hide the evidence in the explosion. Yeah, just bury it. Just blow mm -hmm. it up and bury it. You know, essentially. And we we should also say, if you want to know how evil Horst is, the building that's being demolished is the retirement home that his dad's in. Yeah, yeah, and he keeps talking <laughs> so, about his so dad. So he doesn't and how much care he about him. anybody. Yeah, he's like that the whole because uh, that's the other thing too. A lot of what's going on, you hear Horst over a loudspeaker. Yeah, uh, telling the audience what's happening. He's laying this whole thing out. Even he even taunts Frank in a lot of ways from that that location and. And uh, there's a scene where Frank accidentally calls him instead of his his girlfriend. Yep. And he has a whole conversation where Frank realizes, where uh, Horst realizes, oh, Frank's still alive down there. And yeah, he, and he's like, oh, okay, go yeah, take care I'm, of this real quick, I'm, everybody. I'll take care. Yeah, we're, I'm going to step away, everyone. Uh, we'll give the mic over to uh, 
uh, and they have the a Japanese entre- entrepreneur there who's, who's sponsoring. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we're gonna give the mic over to him. Yeah, sushi, yeah. Um, <laughs> He's like the Japanese love the German punctuality. Yeah, um, we're gonna be blowing this up at two, and uh, yeah, so he <laughs> he shows up, and then he basically covers over the porta potty. That's you know you you know early on that that this was all Horst is doing. Yeah, um, and it's really sad to kind of see what's going on, but th- it's. You know, it's kind of like a realistic movie, but it's also so comical. It really is. Like, you can see someone being in this situation. They may mm-hmm. not have lived as long as Frank, but you can see something like this may be happening, but toning it down a little bit more to real life. But with the comedic moments in here, it makes this movie work so yeah. well. And the acting is so good. Very limited actors that are on here that are on screen at all. There's a lot more voice I think I was saying that I really, really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, with like Frank calling horse and everything and him coming down and then realizing like, oh, he's not going to help me. And he tries calling in the police and then he cuts off like the, um, the, the sig, the signal jammer. Right? Yeah. He's yeah, like, oh, we have a jammer just, going on right now. So it doesn't interfere with anything, which, you know, he's doing mm-hmm. that. So nobody can go and get the police there. Cause if the police right. know he was there, they can arrest him, which we do see, you know, sort of kind of happen at the end of the movie is when, um, Frank finally gets a hold of the police because the jammer um, is finally disabled. And he's like, oh, I can finally you know, get yeah, someone Yeah, all the here. characters from the movie kind of converge at the end because they're all there, the police and Horst yeah. and, and the environmentalist and Mary. And yeah. Yeah. So you, you finally you finally get this uh, big climax and you get to see just how over the top Horst can be. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It all really it's starts so... <laughs> with um poor Bob. You know, he's there just doing his job. <laughs> like he invites Bob on to, you know, talk about what's going on. He's like, oh, yeah, we're going to blow this up. There's going to be any smoke or anything. It's going to be completely clean. And they're like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And Horst like, is well, like and, yes. And they give him such a character. Like you can even hear Bob and Horst talking and they're going into Bob's backstory. And you're like, I'm getting this guy's backstory yeah. without even seeing him. And just so many, like the more I think about it, so many of the little touches in this movie are just ingenious. Yeah. And it's just so much fun. It really is. And then when we finally see Bob like in person, he's like, oh, Frank, you're down there. Because he's the only <laughs> one that like speaks English. Because um, I think yep. they said he was Jamaican, right? So he moved there. Um, yeah. So he's there. He's speaking English. And every now and then Frank is speaking a little bit of English. But I think that's kind of universal over in Germany. Right. Yeah. I think they they're, they are bilingual most mm-hmm. of the time. Um, so he's there. He's like, Oh, Frank, I'm going to get you out. I'm going to shoot this flare, which is like, Oh, we're going to get the helicopter over here. And the helicopter never really comes. And also it's really funny too, is that, um, horse is also, you know, going to be the mayor. Like he's, he's trying to become oh, mayor yeah, there. Yeah. So he's got the plane going around and this says vote point. for him. <laughs> and, uh, it's just like, wow, this guy is so full of himself. He can tell that he was just born into the rich family. You know, we mentioned the plane for a reason, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Bob goes down and he tries to help out and then Horst, um, comes and then manages to blow up Bob, which is so grotesque. (laughs) I feel so bad for Bob. He was just, he was trying so hard. He was trying, yeah. Bob, if if Bob was trying to help, he's like, like, he can't blow it up without this. He's got, I got the key, you know. (laughs) Yeah, he's like, I got the dongle. And then Horst comes over and just like whacks him and takes the dongle. It's like, God damn it, man. Why'd you have to say that? When you say something like that in a movie, mm-hmm. it's going to be used in the plot. Just don't say it, <laughs> right? <laughs> or right. show it, you know. So many close calls too, because you, there's a the whole moment where uh, Frank is trying to get the rabbit to turn off the detonator oh, yeah. <laughs> with the carrots, throwing, carrots, throwing the sandwich, trying to get the rabbit, and then that didn't work out. So he tries another route, and it's uh, uh, just again just insane how far they go with it. And then um, um, I'll save that. Well, I'll save the other one because it's probably my favorite moment, but. Um, just the the subtle little the ingenuity that Frank has to try and show as well too. But yeah, with like the toilet uh, yeah. paper and he lights it on fire yeah. and everything. Is that really, really and then cool. that works out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then he he has like um a, a mini like pickaxe that he has like mm-hmm. in the, it yeah. must be for like you know removing small things or mm-hmm. whatever it may be that he has in the part of body. So he's trying to like break holes into the wall and he's trying to. Now lift the cover up over, um, but he know. gets just that little view of where he is, just through like kind of a people. Yeah, he gets uh, he gets the outwaters view of the world. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Um, so um, you know, after Bob is exploded, um, we see his hand in there, um, and uh, he, he's completely covered now, um, where Frank is. And I think it's at this point when he realizes that the 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 wire that you know impaled him is cut, and this 
moment is so oh. crazy and it's just like you feel for him um and in the suitcase and it that he goes found, on it goes on so long too yeah like not <laughs> not then, interminably long but just oh just a minute <laughs> Squirming um, in your seat. <laughs> yeah, it says, I, I honestly had to stop watching for a second. I was still going, but it was just like, oh my god. Um, but he finds like drugs in the um, the suitcase that he had, and it also has maps and stuff and locations that where he's at. Mm -hmm. And um, so he starts. He takes the the the, the drugs to you know kind of hopefully numb the pain and get him through what he's doing. And he's also he has like the. Um, there's like I guess like hand sanitizer or something like a that he soap uses. Soap dispenser or something, right? That he's yeah. like rubbing on the wire. Right. It's just like, oh my god, he's really doing this. He's going for it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts lifting up his arm, and it's just and like, the, oh the my god. And the foleying during that, the, the foleying during the whole movie. Actually, I, I remember one scene where he was doing something. Oh, where he was chewing the gum. My wife overheard me rewatching, and she's like, oh, because the foley in this is is just nuts. But during that scene, the sounds that are happening, yeah, as he's trying to pull his arm up through the yeah. bar to get himself free finally and, <laughs> and there's so much blood too at this point you'd be like dude you don't have any blood left in your arm this is dead at mm -hmm. this point you yeah, know but right. it's crazy and so over the top but i love how over the top it is <laughs> it really reminds me of like a like a really cheesy 80s movie with a lot of blood and gore mm -hmm. you know right so it does have a little bit of a throwback to that and it's, a, it's all practical as from what i can tell most of everything oh in yeah is definitely it, yeah. practical yeah. Mm -hmm. which you know i always say hell yeah let's, let's keep the practical yeah. alive um so he manages to get his his arm out eventually but before that i think he tries cutting off his arm and then that's when he realizes oh right it's broken yeah. he, right <laughs> so yeah. um he saves his arm or we assume that he saves his arm and then he manages to break free and then everything just collides and everybody and what he realizes uh this i think this is probably one of my favorite moments he realizes there's still you know another bomb set to go off um the final the final detonation of the property and he now knows he's he's got no more time he's yeah. gotta he's gotta do this um that's another thing about this movie like we said it's always a race against time and you you constantly see the timer going down you know when the bomb's going off and uh he realizes that any good does this thing where um he uses his architect skills and he figures out the, the coordinates and he's measuring and he figures out, oh, the wire for the bomb is right under the outhouse where I am right now. Yeah. And uh, he starts, uh, just does this whole thing where he starts digging and the, the, the toilet seat's taunting him and he pulls it up with seconds. And, like, and I love it. He bites right into the cord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trying to get what the rabbit was doing. Yeah. He's like, yeah. Fuck this. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, I'm done. I'm done. I got to do this. So. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he manages uh, I, to save it. Yeah. And then, um, and then that that of course brings Horst there. Yeah, and he comes down, and then um, is this the cop point? Hold on, I have a bunch of notes yeah, over mm -hmm. here. So this is when the cops come down. This is when everyone shows up. Yeah, because he does get out. He uh he manages to open the door and get to see daylight, and he starts to get out. But then, if I remember, Horst pretty much knocks him right back in. Yeah, because he impales his arm again with um. Right, right, with the the machine, right. Yeah, which is, that's even like, even more over the top. Like at this point, dude, your arm is dead. You're dead by yeah. losing so much blood. Like you don't have any nerves left, man. Yeah, horse could, horse has all the leverage right now. He could have shown up with his shovel. He could have shown up with anything, just knocked him right back in. No, that's not horse though. He's going to get into a powered machine a vehicle yeah. and just <laughs> impale his arm that's impale already <laughs> it should have been his other arm is what they should have did so he definitely couldn't have moved is what they should have done <laughs> but just I, to make it and I don't, yeah and i don't always mind a sad ending i don't always mind a dark ending this is not the movie for that i don't think yeah and so i'm glad that mary does get there too i'm glad yeah. that that gets wrapped up because the whole time that's going on he he was he had a fight with her that morning and he kept pushing it yep. off and she would I, I think she was about to tell him she was pregnant too if i remember yeah she said it over the loudspeaker well and i think too if you on one of the flashbacks too she yeah. says i'm going to tell you something and uh he's like no 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 i got one more job one more job and he's like um again not a bad guy just he's uh, just, just trying to provide you know priority priorities are right yeah his priorities are, are right now doing this and so you you see at one point he does manage to open up video footage of them and um, you know, he gets that realization of what he has and what he's going to lose if this all blows up and literally, mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but the, but Mary does show up at the end too. So Mary does show up and he hears over the loudspeaker, Mary's pregnant. Um, and you kind of get this vibe too, that Horst is, is trying to weasel his way into Mary's graces. Yeah. Um, but you know, he well. kind of 
sees that in the flashbacks, but I think that's just like right. he's like about to die. So he's like, "This is what's gonna happen." <laughs> yeah, right. When I die, you know. And um, also when he hears that she's pregnant, he gets like another boost of energy. He's like, "Okay, I right. need to, yeah, I need yeah, to yeah. do this." Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. So, so he gets Mary the does cops. show up too. Yeah. 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 They, the cops show up. Mary shows up. She sees where he is. She knows what's going on. The cops now, are so. so funny. It's got the oh, one like man. <laughs> one guy who's always on the trigger. He's like, "Nope, I'm not. I'm not letting go." And then you got the other like, guy who's like. Come on, man! You get, just, you get just that come like so. Cl- yeah, this mo- the the ending of this movie has a lot of starts and stops because y'all, the cops are here. We're all good. Nope, that's not going to work out. Because- <laughs> and then and then there's a glorious, a glorious moment. You can cut it if you want me to spoil. But that but the, come, that glorious moment where Horst is there with the shotgun and Mary and, and uh, Frank are now down in the porta potty and yeah. all of a sudden he gets whacked and. And there's the environmentalist. and <laughs> it's so funny. And in a glorious moment, the Edelweiss Alan swoops in and there's majestic music playing. And you're like, ah, oh, that's how it ends. Okay, nope. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's dead. Nope, nope. <laughs> the bird's dead, too. You can see that he yeah, shotgunned bird... both of them. Yep. And uh, Mary's now in the porta potty too. And um, they're about to die. And then, then they both look at each other and are like, oh, yeah. And then they... he, well, here's one more voice from behind him. He sees the toilet seat. And that yeah. Makes him... He remembers that the, the wires are still yeah. separated and uh, for the the bomb. Yep. So they're like, let's do this. And they put the wires yeah. together and they close the lid. And I love that. And then it's just all black throughout the, the last it, of the movie. And it's just are you? And, I, and I've seen this so many times because they're, here we go into the song. And I love this. But are you okay? Yes. So Frank, you stink. And then boom, there's that glorious song again. And it's yes. just... I just sat there stunned. I was like, that was so damn good. <laughs> it is. It's a such, it's really is a fun movie. Um, if you're looking for, um, I guess I could kind of put this as a lighthearted film. You know, it's a lot that goes on. It's pretty gory. I think so. Yeah. But yeah. it is very lighthearted at, at, you know, what it's doing. The colors definitely um, help with that. And also the, the great acting and um, it being in one single location is, is definitely helping mm-hmm. it too. And I want more single location films like this because yeah. i think if you do it right you can really make something special as you can see it feels like a play like you have that play feel mm-hmm. like it could be on stage uh, yeah. almost yeah and um i want more from this director and actors oh, yeah. like 100 percent. it's a it's a great film screen box you guys are nailing it like cinedime mm-hmm. like the acquisitions team over there have been yeah. nailing Brand- it brandon hill of yeah. the park yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. brandon hill is great um no, Alex also running all the socials and everything. Like everybody over there, you guys are doing great. And yeah, seriously, anytime thank you. you talk, yeah, anytime you talk to them, you could you could always get the vibe that the Alex and Brandon and um the team over at Bloody Disgusting they they're horror fans and they're yeah. doing this they're doing this because they're horror fans and because they're for, for horror fans. Yeah. Um, I I know when like like Dawning dropped, I got into this thing where Brandon made a comment about a scene that stuck with him, and I said, "Oh, does it involve a phone and and uh, digging?" And he's like, "Yep." And like it's just you feel like you the, you. You, we all share a brain with what yeah. we were looking for, and that, that's that's a very it's very cool, and I love their work. Yeah, me too. And um, I want more foreign films, and that's one thing Screenbox is bringing is a lot of foreign. Oh, yeah. They want um a lot of movies that are hard to get, you know, even on DVD or anything like that in the states, and they're bringing it to their service. Um, and they still are the cheapest streaming service out there. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that is a testament. You know, they are doing a lot for the fans and a lot for anybody who loves horror or anybody who wants to get into horror. They have a wide, wide range of movies over there and holy shit needs to be on your watch list. Yes. Um, so make sure you guys are watching that. Seriously, it's it's really good. But I think at this point, um, Jeff, we can kind of go to our final verdicts. Um, what would you okay. rate this um, out of 10? Mm, I'm always bad at rating. Because <laughs> yeah. I, cause I, first of all, I, I'm kind of known for generally rating horror films high so <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a reputation and i they oh, but i i i mean really i when i went when i did my top 10 of the year i i put this so far for the first quarter i put this at number three um after uh bone woman and uh Candyland. um because okay. the more i think about it i i just absolutely adore this movie and um I'm, i'd have to say it's it's got to be i gotta give it a nine i just uh i watched it a second time and i picked up little things and it's just uh I, it's, if you want a fun movie that you can throw on, have a good time, watch with watch with some people and react, and uh, you can't go wrong with this. With holy shit, it's good. Really yeah, good. Um, I'm gonna have to go ten out of ten, um, just because with the fact of it being a single location for right. having a yeah. very full fledged story and it going on, and and it being a German 
film. Um, mm -hmm. We don't get a lot of, you know, German right, yeah, movies. Right, that's true. Um, and to see what they can do is very promising, and I want mm -hmm. more. Um, you know, everybody And always... I couldn't see this movie not being a German movie. Having yeah, watched, mm -mm. I mean, I couldn't see it any other way. Like, no. And everybody says, you know, the Germans, they go way over the top. Yeah, they do. Um, and it yeah. says it right in this in this film. Mm -hmm. And even with their music, too, yeah, um, is, is crazy. There's a lot of really good right. things in this film. And um, go watch this. So 10 out of 10 for me. Um, Jeff is saying 9 out of 10. And um, this month is just beginning, man. There's a lot of really cool shit that's coming out. Um, we just got a couple screeners for some other films that are coming out that I'm really, really excited to get some reviews on and jeff you are more than welcome on here anytime man you want absolutely, to talk about absolutely absolutely i've got to dig through the pile uh screenbox just dropped <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I, the yes. joke is they dropped like 13 yesterday and i looked today and there's like another 10 on there <laughs> it's a lot I'm like man. what are you guys doing i got stuff to do this weekend but yeah, yeah. um and i do I, I did get a chance to see life with chucky early oh um, yes and, and um, i highly recommend that one that's gonna drop i think like in a week or so yep the uh um, the right. fourth um mm -hmm. so in a couple of days and yep. for anybody who's curious i just put out our interview with kira yes as well. i saw that you did yeah i saw that you did it um it was super fun it was a really short interview just because there was so many she had to do so our time was very limited but it was great to be able to chat with her you know she's part of legacy you know mm -hmm. um tony gardner that's that's crazy yeah right <laughs> And um, it's just, I never really thought about that. The fact that these kids that were part of the Chuck universe grew up like this, like Fiona mm -hmm. Dorif grew up knowing her dad as Chucky and then became part of the, the world. And, you know, um, um, and then the gardeners, you know, were yeah. right there from day one. And it's just, you did never really thought about it. Like they really, they basically were a big family. Yeah. And it says and it a lot funny. in the documentary, which yeah. um, we'll be putting out a review for that as well. That's currently being edited um, as uh, this episode is going to be done, I should be able to finish it today and probably get it out before release. But I might wait until release because there's some movies I'm like, yeah, I should put it out early. But then there's ones I'm just like, no, I want to wait for people to watch the film before they hear my review. Um, I know doing a review in a documentary is a little weird, but this is one that really needs it because of how special it really is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Holy Shit is also you know, another movie that needs to be reviewed and that's why we did it today and yeah uh, damn this there's, there's a I, lot of films <laughs> i need to, i need to side shout out because when you first brought up that you were doing the highlights the uh the screen box essential picks um my first pick was going to be yellow dragon's village because that so one good. so if you haven't seen like but then when i saw holy shit i said no 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 we got to talk about this one but if you're if you're going on i also got to shout out yellow dragon's village because it is insane and so that good. that movie has a lot of twists in it too that's pretty crazy <laughs> that movie just that movie just goes on for about half of it and then says, you know what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it's like we're gonna I'm throw gonna everything out. Else, but we're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's just, definitely one that I got to get. Not to. many movies leave me in a stunned silence about halfway in, going, "What did I? What just happened?" And it was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's like that's a really good one. Um, this this so much, guys. So I'm yeah. I'm trying my best here to help everybody. You know, kind of. Mm -hmm. see what they need to watch so this week there's going to be a lot of essential picks dropping just because of how much is being you know outputted on on screen box so for anybody who's trying to get a list together i'm also going to start doing um letterboxd um just for the essential picks i think it's going to be a good way for people to follow along with the things that i have listed already i do have the app i just haven't used it in like a year so i think this is a a good time to go back and just add things to there. So if anybody is, you know, trying to come on a screen box, if you're already on screen box and want a bunch of movies to watch, go to that list. And also it's you can been always very useful. Yeah. And you can always, uh, you know, message screen box too and be like, Hey, what should I watch? And um Alex will you he'll, know, he'll tell you. <laughs> he'll tell you like here's like twenty titles, go watch them now. <laughs> <laughs> he's good too. He'll be like, What do you like? And then he'll yeah. kind of streamline it. Uh, he's I don't think he stopped doing that to me because he knows I'll uh, if, if he recommends <laughs> it, I'm gonna like he, he recommended Colobos to me, and I love that movie. Yeah, so there's um a lot of good stuff on there, and um Jeff, thank you so much for being yeah. here, man. And I'm um, I'm happy to have finally covered this film, um because mm -hmm. I meant to, and then it just kind of got to the wayside, and now you're like, hey, let's do it. So we did it. So Sweet. awesome. And um thank you for that, and thank you for everybody who's listening. So make sure you go and support Jeff, support the show. Like I said earlier, the links will be in the description below, and um we'll be here on the next one. So keep an eye out for a bunch of screenbox stuff coming up this week um jeff thank you so much man 
Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. And um, we'll catch everybody on the next one.